Takže príjemné, dobré ráno. Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you. Veľmi sa teším, že tu vidím medzi vami aj I'm really happy and pleased nový, to see new faces, our new friends. Ale aj teda and also those visitors and guests that are very precious and that were here yesterday also. Today we continue with our conference with the topic reading as a creative process. So we will get deeper into the experience of what the reading is about. We will not focus on the promoting of children among children, but also among adults. The focus will be on a different concept, on a concept of value. What is the value of reading for our lives personally? I'm really looking forward having this time with you together. It will be very good time. I will share with, my, with you my experience with reading and I'm really looking forward that we are here together. Today we will have also time for interaction. It will be not only about presentations and some lectures. I imagine it as a kind of waves, as an interaction, so we can move and shift these waves and move around and play a bit because word is really full of life and we take it as a word that we see we can hear the word we can take it as an information but not only we can play with the word we can get deeper into the meaning of the word So this is uh, my um, um, vision I would like to have for today. So my topic is a bit maybe filled with a mystery and it gives us illusion, an idea of uh, some kind of mystery. And before I get into my presentation, I would like to say that we will have two parts. So the first part would be, let us think about what the story means for us. Telling about the story from the ancient times has really high value because it is a dialogue. It is a dialogue that we have within ourselves. We talk among, with other people, with people we do not know. So the story is not only something that we are used to something. When we ask a child, okay, tell me something, so children just uh, quickly tell us something, some points, and they make a story. But story is something based on something deeper. It's some kind of puzzle puzzle that we work not mechanically, but we connect very precisely and sensitively, not only with our mind, but also with our feelings. There is one important thing. The stories point at who we are, why we are, where we are, why we are at the point where we are, and what are we doing. So there are three categories that help us to feel the story. The first category are the characters, 
they tell us about who we are, then the, the setting, and where we ask why am I there in the setting, in that environment, why am I having this dialogue? And also the events what are happening in the plot because they influence the climax and the whole story, the whole plot. So it is very in interesting how we talk, how we make this dialogue. Sometimes we, we just want to talk more, sometimes less. Sometimes we just talk and we do not think about it a lot. So sometimes we can talk in a way that we do not want to talk about some events directly or openly when we talk about um, our feelings sometimes we have it in the poems I will tell you about one poem by Milan Rufus and just feel how and the poem is. It is the poem about uh, the well, and it is the poem that uh, covers deep meaning about the water and about how important the water is for us that we take the water in our hands and we we drink it. This poem covers uh, dialogues, dialogues to many different people. For example, this poem is, can be interpreted as a dialogue to someone that we really love. We can see this poem as a dialogue to someone who is in the universe. Or we can see it as a dialogue not only between two characters, but we can focus on events, what happened in that poem. Or who the author is when we talk about that little well. So when I'm thinking about this, about these events in this poem, for example, I imagine the author that comes to the little well this author is, I imagine, his own journey, coming closer to the well, and I see there a concept of a, a journey, how we go, how we are on our journey, and we can imagine it. We can imagine who is, who is that person who makes this journey. For example, uh, I have association with uh, Gideon from Bible. And it is one of stories that I really like from the Bible. And in this story, there is a part how we can uh, drink water. And in the story of Gideon, there is an army that comes to the river and they are really thirsty and they just come closer and they just drink, drink, drink as a as a dogs. They are they really splash the water all around. And then some of them, few of them, those three hundred, they come to the river, to the water, and they drink it uh, and they took the water in their hands and they look all around. So, so, in this way, I connected 
with the, the method how to speak about things. Each one of us has own interpretations and in this way the stories and the stories uh, connect. So the stories refers to topics and words, and this was their function originally. So how we express the words, we formulate them in a way as we want the dialogue have. Now, in the morning, one another poem came to my mind, uh, written by Pavel Orsak Viesdoslav from Bloody Sonnets. And there is a poem um, about uh, nations, nations that, uh, that uh, <laughs> I just, I, and Timothy is just uh, quoting a really uh, great sonnet written by Pavel Orsak Viesdoslav, and she says, I'm saying hi to my interpreter. So she's describing this sonnet, which covers really in a brilliant way uh, the words about uh, describing Second World War and the First World War, the bloody sonnets. And there is a picture, a metaphor, that there on the fighting field among blood there are pearls and I will read this story I will read this story there is a pig pig just uh, digging all around the mud and suddenly this pig found a pearl. Well, I found a pearl, but, well, what is the pearl about for me? I just don't like pearls. I would prefer to find uh, some bread. And this pig uh, throw away this pearl. And the moral of this story is, yes, we uh, many times we find valuable things, but we just throw them away. So many times this proverb is really, um, this is very important. There is a proverb, do not throw pearls to pigs, to swines. That's the biblical proverb. And what does it mean? What is it about? When we have pearl as a decoration, we express our identity who we are, so we describe a character, identity, we speak about our personality. And now, imagine we have those pearls in that sonnet, in bloody sonnet, there are pearls on the bloody battlefield, there are more emotions. And in the story with the pig, there is another meaning of the pearl. Where is the pearl? Why is there? And who is the pig? Or many, many other questions. Now I'm heading toward my abstract finally. What is the moral? of the story. Do you know why I ask this question? Because I read you a fable, and a fable is a short, epic um, um, read, uh, work that has a moral. And I would like to hear what is the moral. So you see that we, we need to find the answer. What are the morals? They, yes, they are hidden, the moral is hidden in the fables. In the period of Renaissance, 
otázka etiky. We decided to put to shift or to put aside things of morals aside. So now, at that time, we are maybe a bit confused what was the dialogue about. The dialogue was about that what is good is beautiful. And this fable calls us back to ask what happened before the pig came to the mud. Who had the pearl before? Who, who was the owner of the pearl? When we will think and interpret about this fable, we will think about the environment, about the setting. Why is this pearl inside the mud? How is it possible that the pearl got into the mud? Was somebody very uh, angry that he put this pearl inside the mud? Was, was he angry or was he, this, did he, was he, was he depressed? Why did he lose the pearl? What were the circumstances? So the reading moves on, the interpretation moves on. When we think about the pig, we know that the fable, in, the, the pig in a fable refers to people. And when we think about the fable, in Bratislava, we have in a Horsky Park uh, one cafe, uh, and I really like this cafe. It is um, in the in the midst of the forest, and the owner has also animals there, and there is only uh, one small pig and other animals like goats and sheep, and I really like this cafe and for. This uh, fable is not about about the pig, because we are not here to have emotions to that pig, because it would be animal story. I want to show you something here. When it is absolutely different story, character of the animal story as a story of Bambi, the deer. It's absolutely different concept of animal story because we feel feelings toward it. However, when we look at fable, fables are as mathematic patterns. And in fables, we are to concentrate only on that pattern. Because otherwise we will just lose contact with it. And this pattern is focused on some behavior of a society. And we could we could associate with it. And there is a moral. And this moral, we will get to the moral after we just go through it deeper. Now, I will move on and I will read another story not only about the pig, I will also need a bit of help, it is a bit in interaction. It is a fable about a wolf and a crane bird. So there was, once upon a time, there was a wolf and he was eating and he had a bone stuck in his throat and he was really dying and he was uh, yelling for help, but all the animals were afraid. And uh, wolf said, I will give you something when you help me. And finally, a uh, great uh, crane bird came and with his beak he pulled the uh, stuck uh, bone from his throat away. And wolf then survived 
and the crane bird as well. <laughs> when you had your beak in my throat, I might have eaten you. So just leave. So I will come back when we have this pattern. There are three things to highlight. It's like uh, three um, car windows that I need to see. When I drive my car, I need to see on the left, on the right, and up. There are three points interconnected. So, characters, that's the one window, the character of a wolf and a crane bird. So, the fables refer to people, that is easy. Wolf will represent who? That's the question. That's the easy question. Who is the wolf? A politician, maybe, it may be. Yes, there is a group of politicians, so leaders, leaders in general. Yes, they may be. Then, well, who else might stand for the wolf? When I think about this pattern, I'm looking at this character and looking for a social group. May it be as an evil and a goodness? Yes, but that's only abstract level. Just be in, come to more details. Type of a person. <laughs> institutions? Okay. Yes, I agree. Also, institution may represent the wolf. That would be very interesting. Some kind of merchant. Okay, business. That may be connotations like pre predators. That would be automatically a person who behaves in a violent way. Okay. Many other types of people. Okay, okay. Remember this. Now we will look at the crane bird. Who is Crane? Who, who does he represent? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so as soon as we look at Crane, we see our own experience there, so everyone who is a bit empathic, we, we really may connect with this. Yes, Crane might be really a person who, would, uh, who loves to help. And now, so is Crane Bird emphatic or just he, he surprised? There are many keys to this. Okay, these are characters. Now let's look to another thing, the setting. Setting is always the key. Without the setting, we cannot find the answer to the characters. The characters in the fable is never without setting. Characters are always in the fable in specific setting. 
the setting characterized the characters. Aesop or other people who wrote fables, he described it in a way he needed to place it in a setting. So, the setting is the key. Fables originated to, to refer to social situations. I'm, I'm looking at the concept where to be and where not to be. So, setting. The typical setting for the wolf is what? The forest. Yes? Forest. Yes, the forest. The typical setting for the crane is the lake, the meadow, near waters. What is the lifestyle of the wolf and what is the lifestyle of the crane in relationship to society? The wolf uh, lives in a clamp and uh, uh, with other wolves, yes, that's right, with other wolves, and the uh, crane lives alone. That is right. So the wolf is happy when he has another wolf all around. Okay, and this wolf is alone, so we know that wolves really need to have other wolves all around them. And they have a really beautiful pattern of how to take care of each other. They have really very nice pattern among ourselves. There are older wolves, younger wolves. So let's look at the wolf. And he is alone. So he's a loner, solitary. And what is typical for solitaire wolf? Yes, he might have been uh, refused by his own wolves. Okay. Or there is some kind of reason that he left his friends, his wolves. So we may imagine he doesn't live a peaceful life because he doesn't have friends around him because he, in order to live, he needs to have other wolves to catch prey. So, okay, and the question is, what did the crane did in the forest? Why was the crane in the forest? I will quote the wolf had the bone stuck in the throat and he was yelling from the pain but all the animals were afraid of his teeth. Okay, so I will shift this before. Okay, so we will now focus on a, an event in a story that was preceding this fable. So let's imagine it is morning. Probably this happened during the day, this fable. So. Let's do this experiment. We will do this setting. Okay, where did the crane live? From where did the crane hear the yelling of the wolf? You can join us. We will uh, create this setting only by sounds. Maybe we will close our doors.
A je nás veľa. And takže we to are, to veľmi masívne. There are many people here <laughs> that is very good. So maybe it will be a massive sound. I don't know. We will do it in this way. We will do cranes home. So you will not have assigned task. Your only task will be to listen very carefully to imagine the setting where the crane has his home and to imagine and follow and to enter this crane's setting, this crane's home as one of the characters. Okay, this is just experiment. So I will show you the starting point and we will be silent and then we will start with the sounds doing the crane's home. Imagine early in the morning How excellent! You were amazing. Okay, so what did we learn about his home, about his setting? Okay, how there were many creatures, many animals all around. Yes, what were they doing? Yes, they were waking up. Now we can do this. We will insert there a moment where, in which a moment where the crane decides to leave his home. I will leave it up to you. I don't know what will you do, how you will react. Imagine the event, some event, make, make up an event how to how to describe and express the crane deciding to live in his home. Okay, just again imagine waters all around or under the water somewhere. It is morning probably. So what has happened? What happened? He left. The crane left. What happened? There was too much noise and the crane left. Okay, second task. Let us look into the forest. What happened in the forest? The wolf 
got a uh, bone stuck in his throat. He is uh, crying for help. And what happened before the bone stuck in his throat? Imagine, we are in the forest. And concentrate on the event right before the bone stuck into in his throat. You may include that bone also. Prepare, we are in the forest. There is a wolf. Well, okay, we have not come to the desperate yelling of the wolf yet, because he really needs to yell and to cry out, so the other animals, all the animals would would hear him, but I, yes, there, we have this more specifically. So, this is the reason why we need to see all three uh, parking we, um, we, um, mirrors in a car, left, right and in the front. So, this is important, the setting. The forest is an archetypal setting, environment. And in uh, the old times, the forest represented an environment where the horror and evil crimes took place. Maybe there are wolves, there are um, uh, bad people, criminals, gangsters. Why we have uh, in a tale of Red Riding Hood uh, also the environment and setting of the forest. Because people saw it in, in this way. So, so when we look at the forest, so when we imagine it in this way, we feel the character of crane and the character of wolf in a bit different way. So we see this um, helping, em empathetic um, person decided to leave his home. He went through all the boundaries and borders, limits of his society and went to the forest. So what was the reason that the crane decided to enter the forest? What did lure the crane to come to the forest? You can make it also in a group. Imagine that real cry of the wolf. Could you please express it? The yelling of the wolf? And we imagine that we will, we, all the rest of us will listen to it as the crane. What was it that the crane was learned, lured by 
this desperate yelling. The crane is at his home and he listens to the wolf. If we interpreted the wolf's language, what did he say? What did you feel from it? The story is a dialogue. What did you feel? Yes, there was anxiety. Anxiety. Uneasiness. Yelling, sorrow, grief. What did the crane feel? What do you think? Yes, maybe, partly. The crane was just... Uh, uh, he liked to explore other territories. Yes, it may be. The crane might have been only curious. Why not? But let's Dobre, get back to the concept of uh, sympathy and compassion. Okay, let's imagine a person that is compassionate and he feels compassion. Maybe a person who just realizes that he has something that he can offer to others. Okay. So, what did the crane think about himself? In what way did he imagine that he could help? Yes, the crane saw himself that his gift is that he has his long beak. He uses it naturally in his life and he was able to, to use his long beak and bring that uh, unstuck that bone from the throat. So the setting tells us how the change of the environment can change the events that we are in. The question is how the wolf reacted. That's the big question. Did, was his behavior good or bad or... The wolf reacted naturally to what he was. We may be angry at that wolf, but the wolf really represented who he was. So the wolf was not the question, he didn't surprise us, but the question is, the question is, the crane, why did he help? Imagine, the crane, the crane that is dancing uh, close to the water, he has his special move, moves and dances, and what the crane does in the forest. The forest is absolutely not suitable for the crane. The crane cannot live in the forest at all. Okay. The question is where it takes place. 
And when I imagine, and I, when I told you in the beginning that the fable is a pattern, and we insert to the fable the patterns, and later we can use the fable maybe change in its context. If we had animal stories, uh, we would have uh, it adapted to other environments, but when we have a fable, we can insert the that what we want to focus on, and we have that pattern. We have the basic keys, the characters, wherever they are, and in, in some of the way they interact. Okay, so this was the, the meeting with the big beasts and animals. So in this way we can use it with other fables. There is another fable, the wolf and the lamb. Do you know this fable? Yes, it, maybe for me it means it's a super intelligent person, that lamb. The lamb is really talented. The lamb is, uh, when they meet with the wolf, uh, near the spring, near the river, they meet there, the springs are places where the society meets, the nations meet, and place of the conflict, or they cooperate together. So, the lamb went to the spring and met the wolf at the spring. So, when we work with the setting, the setting in the fables is very important when we want to interpret the fable. I think that my time, I do not have more time, but I really thank you for your cooperation. I really enjoyed and it and I'm looking forward to other presentations.